Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It's always a joy to have you tuning in and participating as we study God's word together and take a look at his word for us each and every day of what we can learn, how we can draw closer to him, and how we can better follow him. You know, as you read through the Gospels, you see a consistent theme that Jesus did not like the Pharisees. And, and it, it, the surface level it might seem a little odd. The Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. They were essentially the pastors of the day as they were the ones responsible for leading the people in spiritual matters. Like, of, of all the people you would think Jesus would like and get along with, it should be the Pharisees, but it actually was the exact opposite. And, and there's so many reasons, and really over the next few weeks, we'll start to see some of those reasons come out as Jesus begins a, a period of really speaking out directly against these in a, in a more systematic way. Because along the, the way throughout the book of Matthew, we've seen some of this pop up, uh, but Jesus gets pretty direct and he shares a parable uh, today in Matthew chapter 21 that I just want to read for us and allow to just kind of soak into our minds and hearts today. Uh, and it really drives at what issue existed there between Jesus and the Pharisees. And he'll, as I said, unpack that in the coming chapters. Um, but I think also challenges us of how do we receive uh, the, the leadership of God in our life and what do we do with that? So Matthew 21, Jesus says this. He says, hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. Now, when the season for fruit draw near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first time, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, he, they said to themselves, this is their heir. Come, let us kill him, and we can have his inheritance. And when they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him, when therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will we do to those tenants? They said to him, well, they will put those wretches in a miserable death, let out of the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits of their seasons. And Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? He quotes and it says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is what the Lord is doing. And it is marvelous to our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, he says, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on the stone will be broken into pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. Now hear this. It says, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. See, what Jesus is doing here is he, he, uh, he presents a parable that parallels this, uh, this, this man who, who built this, this wine press and built this situation. And the servants there refer to the, the prophets and the, the leaders who uh, are in the Old Testament that were rejected, that were often stoned, that were often beaten and tortured and killed because the people didn't want to hear its message. And the son in this story, he's connecting to himself. What are you going to do when the son comes to deliver this message, to be the messenger here? And he's saying, hey, the Pharisees, you as the, the tenants of the land are going to reject me as well. And that's exactly what they did. It's even the heart's desire in the moment was to arrest him, but they paused uh, for sake of a riot there in that moment. You know, and I think as we look at that for us, we have to ask, what are we doing and how are we receiving God's message and messengers in our life? When, when people come, whether it be in the form of a godly friend or a pastor in our life, are we receiving godly counsel and wisdom with receptiveness or are we pushing back against it? Are we rebelling against the, the message of God? But really it comes to what are we doing with the Son of God? The Son of God, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, are we receiving him as our Lord and Savior? Are we seeing him as the cornerstone that our life is built upon? Are we seeking to reject him, to push back against him, to say, I'm not interested in what you're here to do in my life? Because really, that's at the core of what Jesus' tension with the Pharisees was all about. That they had a pattern of rejecting God's messengers, of rejecting God's heart and desire for, for their life, and really... He knew that they were rejecting him as the son of God and savior of the world. And that is where that tension lies. In my heart for you uh, and for, for all that are connected to Calvary, and even if you're not, but you're watching this video, 
is for us to not be those people who reject God's uh, son and, and message that has come into the world to save us, to redeem us, to give us hope and purpose, but to be people who welcome that with receptivity and enjoy in our life and say, this is going to become the cornerstone of everything that we see our world by. So let's not be like the Pharisees, but instead let's be people who see Jesus as the son of God and savior of the world and the cornerstone of everything that we do. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.